this video lecture we're going to discuss electrophilic addition of alkenes and the first thing when we're discussing uh, the, uh, the electrophilic addition of alkenes we're going to just define what an electrophile is now an electrophile is a species which is a species which is attracted which is attracted to electrons so it's which is attracted to an electron rich center so what that means is that uh, it's going to attract anything that has negative charge on it whether it's partial negative whether it has excess electrons it, it has a double bond so this electron rich center could be could be a negative charge it could be a slight negative charge or it could be a double bond because double bonds have a lot of electrons so this species would be attracted to double bonds or it could be attracted to triple bonds as well so any substance that is going to be attracted to negative charge is going to be called an electrophile and an electrophile would be able to accept in the process it, it would have the capability to accept a pair of electrons whether they are bonding electrons or they are lone pairs so it has the ability to accept a pair of electrons from the other substance it's going to be attracted to those electrons so which species could be electrophiles the first thing is it could be uh, a positive ion because positive ions would be attracting electrons or it could be a neutral neutral atom or molecule where one atom one specific atom has uh, vacant orbitals so it could be a neutral atom or molecule having weakened outer shell orbitals so it can attract those electrons and put them in those weakened outer orbitals we are now going to discuss uh, the bromination of alkenes it's the first uh, uh, elect uh, first electrophilic addition reaction that we're going to discuss and we're going to discuss the mechanism as well so it's a reaction in which uh, alkenes react with bromine and the conditions for this reaction are that you use either Br2 aqueous or you use Br2 in CCl4 which is an, an inert solvent because when it's an aqueous state water has a tendency to react as well so let's think of uh, alkenes reacting with bromine and how the reaction would proceed and the same reaction could be carried carried out for chlorine as well it would be called chlorination as uh, so you can you can either use chlorine or you can use bromine so let's pick one alkene and i'm picking propene which has three carbon atoms and they would be this carbon atom would have two hydrogen atoms and this one would have a single hydrogen atom and it's going to react with bromine br2 and the result of the product the product in this case it's going to be that ch3 the entire molecule is going to be exactly the same you write the entire molecule in exactly the same way except for one thing and that one thing is that instead of drawing the double bond you instead you're not going to draw the double bond draw a single bond in its place and now carbon is going to be short of bonds it's only making three bonds so it's going to make the fourth bond with bromine and this carbon is also short of one bond so it's going to make that bond with the other bromine so this is what the overall reaction looks like so a propene reacting with bromine the double bond changes it changes into a single bond the entire molecule the entire structure remains the same except for the fact that way the double bond changes into a single bond carbons are short of bonds and they end up completing those bonds by adding by adding bromine or bonding with bromine i am now going to discuss the mechanism of this reaction and how this reaction takes place and how the electrons move now remember the arrows that i'm going to draw are going to show the movement of electrons now as you can see that you have uh, that i have a propene molecule and the propene molecule has a carbon double bond carbon so there's a pi electron cloud because it's a double bond and there's a lot of negative charge built up over here because there are four electrons being shared between the two carbon atoms so there's a lot of negative charge now for now if you have a bromine molecule and if that bromine molecule comes sufficiently close 
to this uh, to this particular double bond if it comes sufficiently close to this double bond then what's going to happen is that this bromine molecule is the electrons over here are going to get repelled so if this bromine molecule gets sufficiently close to this negative charge the electrons in bromine are going to get repelled because those electrons have a negative charge as well so and i'm drawing a full arrow because both of these two electrons are going to get repelled and what's going to happen is that the bromine molecule is going to get polarized this bromine the bottom one is going to get a slight negative charge whereas this bromine at the top is going to get a slight positive charge now once a bromine molecule gets polarized that's the first step once that molecule gets polarized the bromine which is slightly positive now is going to get attracted to the electrons in the double bond over here even more so what's going to happen is that the electrons in the double bond are going to be attracted to this positive bromine so now what's happening is that you have one bromine molecule which is negative and that negative bromine molecule is being repelled and you have one bromine molecule which is positive and that positive bromine molecule is being attracted and what will inadvertently happen is that this bond is going to split it's going to break up the two electrons would go to this to the bottom bromine because they're being repelled by the electrons over here and a heterolytic fission occurs so so you have heterolytic fission and the bond eventually breaks now the bromine molecule got polarized and eventually it's going to break so here i'm showing that the bromine molecule the bond over here which was over here because the electrons were being repelled by the negative charge over here these electrons ended up with the bromine at the bottom so so this bromine over here gets a negative charge and it ends up with the two electrons in the bond it's a heterolytic bond fission and that bromine over, the, over there that lost the two electrons which were being bonded between these two bromine atom and that gets a plus one charge now once this bromine over here gets a plus one charge it's going to be attracted to the electrons in the double bond so the electrons are going to be it's going to be attracting these electrons so what's going to happen to the double bond is that the double bond two of the electrons two pairs of electrons being bonded in the double bond are going to slowly drift away and they will get attracted by by the bromine the positive bromine over here and bromine would eventually go and bond with that particular carbon atom so let me rub that double bond off so one of the double bond one pair of electrons in the double bond gets attracted to the bromine so i'm going to rub this off and show you the next step what's going to happen is that the electrons in the double bond ended up with this particular bromine and you have to lose the plus one charge as well because now there's no longer any plus one charge with that bromine so that bromine ended up with that uh, and it got attached to the carbon atom and what happened to the other carbon atom is because it lost its its electrons in the double bond it gets a plus one charge now the very last step of the mechanism is that this carbon which has a plus one charge it will be attracted to this negative bromine which ended up with the two electrons in the bond so it has extra electrons and it's going to be bonded and it's going to be attracted by that particular carbon atom so i'm going to draw the final molecule that this bromine goes and gets attached to the to the positive carbon atom over there and what you're going to get is you're going to get a molecule of you're going to have ch3 you're going to have c h another h and one bromine got attached to this carbon atom and another bromine got attached to this particular carbon atom now i'm going to go over the entire mechanism one more time and uh, this time i've uh, drawn i've uh, removed all the irrelevant stuff if you if you asked to draw the mechanism of an electrophilic addition mechanism this is exactly how you're going to write this down so starting off and explaining the whole thing again you have uh, a double bond which has a lot of negative charge there are lots of electrons over there and if a bromine molecule gets sufficiently close to this carbon double bond carbon the electrons in bromine are going to get repelled so they're going to get repelled and this bottom bromine gets a negative charge and this uh, bromine at the top gets a positive charge and once it gets a positive charge it's going to get attracted to the negative electrons in the double bond even more so it's going to attract those electrons towards itself 
and what will eventually happen is that this negative bromine is going to get repelled and this positive bromine is going to get attracted so this positive bromine goes and bonds takes the electrons in the double bond and attaches it gets attached to one of the carbon atoms by taking electrons away from the double bond and since the dub double bond had electrons which belong to this carbon atom as well this carbon gets a plus one charge and this molecule this intermediate is called a carbocation intermediate because the carbon over there has a plus one charge and once it has a plus one charge this bromine negative which broke away initially and which ended up with the two electrons in the double in the bond over here so this bromine then gets attracted to this positive charge and it get, goes and bonds with it eventually resulting in this molecule so both of the carbon atoms in the double bond end up with bromines attached to them so you have a two-step reaction mechanism which is called electrophilic addition and remember the second step in this reaction mechanism is the fast step this one over here is the fast step because this involves uh, the bonding between a positive carbon and a negative bromine and the attraction is going to be very strong so the activation energy for this particular step two would be very very low whereas this first step involves the polarization and the heterolytic bond fission of bromine and it's going to take a lot long time you have to because it's going to have the exact orientation and, and it's supposed to collide with the double bond at a particular angle only then the reaction would proceed and the polarization would occur at a very slow pace so this one over here the step one over here is your slow step